the depths of the Bornean rainforest lies an ancient land, remaining undiscovered until the late 20th century. Bounded by a ring of sheer cliffs is a huge bowl of pristine rainforest, separated from the outside world, hidden beneath the mist. With the heart of this basin almost inaccessible to even the most determined explorers, much of this unique environment is yet to be uncovered. In here, animals may exist that are found nowhere else on the planet, and that have never even been seen before. Welcome to Maliau. Maliao Basin was discovered in 1947 by a British pilot as he flew over the Bornean state of Sabah. But it remained a true mystery until 1988, when the first expedition decided to uncover its secrets. To this day, only 2,000 people have set foot in the basin, and at least 50% has yet to be explored. From this, it adopted its nickname. Sabah's Lost World. It began forming 15 million years ago when Maliao was a coastal delta. It is a sedimentary formation mainly comprised of sandstone and mudstone undergoing erosion and deposition, gradually uplifting a plateau over 6 million years. The result is a huge dish with a single river which drains the entire 588 kilometer square catchment down to the Kinabatangan, the longest river in Sabah, meaning land of the giant staircase in the native Bornean Murut language. Maliao's circular ridge surrounding the basin rises up to 1,300 meters, creating a land unreachable to external influences, a land lost in time. The familiar sound of the hornbill fills the rainforest canopy as a fig tree comes into fruit nearby. Here he is, a rhinoceros hornbill, a splendid example of one of Borneo's eight species of hornbill. The red cask on its head takes six years to develop and begins white, slowly becoming red as he rubs the cask on a gland under his neck. He fumbles with a fig one of the more common fruits of the hornbill diet. The cask on his head has a remarkable echoing system inside it, which dates back to the hadrosaurs of prehistoric times. However, the hornbill is threatened. His unique horn is considered red ivory, and so is hunted and traded by local poachers. Similarly, these big birds inhabit large areas and require a lot of space to survive. Sadly, logging and deforestation is pushing this iconic species out of their natural environment 
and their numbers are dwindling. But now it is dusk, and the hornbill will return home for the night. But sometimes it is what we see in the morning in the fig tree that can be even more exciting. Dawn has come at the fig tree. A tree shrew runs along, looking for food. Another hornbill, this time the Asian black. But what's this swinging in the branches? There, a Bornean gibbon, or Muller's gibbon. This rare species spends most of its time in the trees. Its long arms with hooked hands swing between the branches. They rarely descend to the floor. Living in small family groups, they are also a threat to extinction from hunting and the pet trade. But what's this in a nearby merbau tree? A binturong, more commonly known as a bear cat, these strange and elusive beasts inhabit the forests of Southeast Asia. Seen mainly during the night, but occasionally during the day, these omnivorous animals eat just about anything, but are not the most skilled climbers, and sometimes have to descend to the floor to move between trees. A long-tailed macaque balances along a branch, but she is not alone. Her troop feeds in this nearby tree. Troops can typically contain up to 30 individuals, and the dominant gender is female. Males will leave the troop when they reach puberty, and this increases genetic diversity. This particular group contains only five individuals, which suggests low predation rates. Large group numbers help reduce against predation, but are a lot harder to upkeep and find food for. Macaques have an incredibly broad diet, and although the alternative name is crab-eating macaque, they do not typically consume crabs. Their diet ranges from leaves, fruits, insects, to even lizards and small mammals. Although not the most accomplished of climbers in the primate world, macaques have very dexterous fingers, which allows them to be very selective about what they eat. Although macaques are highly abundant across Southeast Asia and not particularly threatened, they can be considered a threat to other species. Because of their highly adaptable nature and broad diet, macaques can easily outcompete other animals if they are forced into a new environment. Activities such as farming and deforestation are pushing long-tailed macaques into new territories where they may cause long-lasting or even irreversible damage. The rainforest itself is so diverse, and as we move from canopy to ground level, certain abiotic and biotic constraints change, such as temperature, light availability, food availability, and carbon dioxide concentration. This in turn changes which animals can survive and which animals we will see. So let us come down from the treetops and see what we can find on the forest floor. Down here on the rainforest floor, something is lurking in the grass. An Asian water monitor, the second heaviest lizard in the world after the Komodo dragon. 
Although this is a juvenile, he may grow up to three meters long. His coloration will also change, losing his distinctive yellow and black markings, which will become dull and grey. As a relatively common and successful species here in Borneo, they are one of the top predators. However, once again, they are under threat from humans. They are sought for as exotic pets, and unfortunately their skin is considered valuable in the fashion industry. His tongue licks the air. He senses molecules that he perceives as taste, and makes his escape. Detritivores, such as millipedes, are an essential part of the forest ecosystem. They decompose plant and animal matter into much simpler forms, which can be processed and recycled in nutrient cycles around the whole ecosystem. This particular species is a flat-backed millipede, and although they look dangerous, they don't bite. We tend to see a lot of small detritivores at night when there are fewer predators about. This is the Bornean giant millipede. They can reach up to 20 centimeters in length and have as many as 300 pairs of legs. Millipedes differ from centipedes by having two pairs of legs at each segment. Centipedes, on the other hand, only have one. One of the most important detritivores in the rainforest ecosystem are the termites. They break down and decompose so much matter that they actually release 11% of the world's methane. They have a highly organised social system, with a queen and a king, and then soldiers and workers, with a specific role set for each individual. Here they can be seen moving matter from one place to another, an important process in nutrient cycling on the rainforest floor. From the side, this may look like a random jumble of termites, going in all sorts of strange directions. However, let us take a look from the top. Here we can see how some of the roles of these termites interact. The smaller termites are guarding on the outside, while the larger ones take the path through the centre. It works remarkably well, even when there can be a bit of a roadblock. These ants are also very social creatures, and have a peculiar way of cleaning each other. They remove small parasites and other unwanted bits of matter from each other using their antenna and mandibles. Weaver ants form intricate nests from the silk of their larvae. They defend it ferociously. Although they do not inject poison, they have a very strong bite, which I found out while filming this shot. This giant ant has fallen victim to cordyceps fungus. The spores infect the creature and force it to clamp down on a plant. The fungus then grows throughout the body of the ant and kills it. Finally, the fruiting body of the fungus bursts through the ant and releases its spores once more into the surrounding area. The Bornean rainforest is a truly incredible place, and Malayal Basin holds many of its wonders. But what is there in place to protect this area, and how can we help to make it last forever? Hmm. 
Maliao Basin Conservation Area. This complex is based on the southeastern edge of the basin. It is comprised of many buildings designed to facilitate tourists, scientists and local research assistants. With minimal impact on the surrounding forest, these facilities are nestled among the trees, allowing visitors to be in constant direct contact with the rainforest. For tourists, Maliao provides comfortable accommodation, a visitor centre and a wide variety of nature trails to explore. These paths wind through thick forest, across hanging bridges and up to breathtaking viewpoints. Tourists visiting Maliao will come away with a new insight into the beauty and importance of this environment and hopefully pursue methods to get involved in its conservation. The research facilities span from a fully functional lecture theatre and library to well-equipped laboratories and office spaces. This provides scientists with the best opportunity to efficiently carry out important and groundbreaking research in this field. Field sampling can be quickly done in the nearby sampling sites or satellite camps and then samples return to the lab for analysis. Researchers not only study a huge variety of animals that live in Maliao, but also look at the important processes and environmental factors that dictate the health of the tropical forest ecosystem. The future of this important environment rests with us. Maliao Basin Conservation Area is an essential base from which scientists can carry out frontline research and implement new conservation strategies designed to protect our tropical forests. Not just at Maliao, but across the entire globe.